Okay, and so, um, like I said, um, she can have all the credits, the royalties, the um, copyright, whatever. She can tell the story. She can get it out because I have a hard time communicating. And, but I do have proof to, access, to back up what I'm saying, but nobody wants to look at it because people don't consider me, um, they don't consider me credible because of my reputation being a drug addict and a hooker. People just think I'm crazy. Okay, so Pentavira, I don't know, don't know who she is, but she's got courage. <laughs> she's got guts. She's got enough guts to get up there and tell me that she don't like what I'm doing. You know, and, uh, okay, this is my passport here. So, do 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 passport. And you will see um, a few days after uh, Charles and Camelia were married, I uh, went to go to Great Britain, right here, April 14th, 2005, and then they sent me back. They put a black X on my passport. I kissed it with my lipstick, by the way. Black X. Um, what is this? I want to April. Oh, oh they, they marked this one when I came back because I couldn't get the plane back because there was no planes going back, so I had to stay there a few days anyway, but they, still they said I was not a genuine visitor, and they put a black X on my passport saying um, I'm not allowed in her country, and I'm not allowed in any other country in the world either, so I'm globally blackballed. Uh, what was I saying about, um, okay, so the ritual, uh, July 23rd is when, um, Ceres lines up with the, uh, the sun and the earth and the pyramids, you know, the pyramids, it lines up perfect. You heard of the mystery of Ceres, the Supreme, Co the Supreme Mother Council of the World in Washington, D.C. is called, uh, the mystery of Ceres, too, and that's a big part of it, it's connected with draconian and uh, reptilian. The, the Illuminati. Uh, anyway, so um, there's a two-week retreat, of course, but mo it really starts getting active in there around the 17th, the 16th or the 17th. People start coming in in their limos and their cars, driving through the gate. Um, there's also a landing strip inside, so like the Queen and presidents and stuff like that. And Arnold Schwarzenegger is a big member, too, of Boho. They fly in from the inside. They don't come in through the gate. But a lot of people do. So I'm going to be outside the gate, especially on the 21st, 22nd, and the 23rd of July. I'm going to write a letter or some, something, I'm going to write to them telling everybody, but Queen Elizabeth is going to be in there too, and I'm, as the people go in the gate, <laughs> I'm going to be like waving and smiling at them and giving them all my letter. And everybody that goes to Bohemian Grove is Sangarian. Uh, the global elites are all Sangarian. <clears throat> they make up 3% of the Earth's population. They're fourth dimensional, fourth dimension reptilian beings. They've been here um, for a long, long, long time. Back in the Bible, Gen Genesis, genitals, represents when Eve interbred with um, the snake, which is reptilian, the Sangarian, and caused a bloodline. Um, but see, the Sangarians, they don't have bodies on their dimension, and the only way that they can manifest in physical bodies here on this dimension is to inhabit human bodies. But they can only inhabit bodies with black auras, so certain biology. And every black aura in the world is inhabited, uh, except me, I guess I got told. That my, and that's the reason they've been talking with me and stuff, is because my aura is black, too. And, um, and my master mason, Michael Rogers, his aura is black, too, and he's been inhabited for 20 years by Draken, and that's why he's got such high titles and is a member of Boho and the Royal Order of Scotland, the Royal Order of Kilwinny, um, the Royal Order of Gestures, and has um, a lot of power over that. But now he, the reptilian Draken, has, was taken out of him, and then um, he's dead now. Draken's dead. Uh, Pendar, um, as, <laughs> this sounds crazy, I know you guys are really going to really eat this up, think, saying I'm insane, and they're going to, and I, my dream said too that they're going to try to murder me, my dream, I don't know if it was a premonition or just my fears, but saying that my master Mason murdered me because of um, a multiple personality problem or whatever, because he's been the medium between us, but anyways, um, well, Pendar, he's, um, He's out of the picture. I got, he came here the other night, though, through my Master Mason. The Mioho Rengeko is how I channel him when I chant with my Master Mason. And when it, when it comes in, he starts, it's real dramatic. His eyes start going back. He's like, ah, you know, and his face and everything, it starts changing. And he goes, ah, you know, like that. You know, he calls me a Vita. He says I was a Vita Perone in a past life. But I don't know. Um, anyways, though, he, uh, was blown up in an explosion, the body that he inhabits uh, on a, uh, November 17th, 
Draken died, and then Pendar thought he was going to get better, and he was been communicating with me. I've got thousands and thousands of letters from him as the story unfolds, and he talks about the black aura. He explains to me what they look like, like a very large, large li lizard dog. And he thinks, and see, their memories are intact. So when they take a human body, they, the, when the human body that they inhabit or hijack dies, they just move into another one with their memories still intact. So all these Sangarians here in the world have their memories intact for thousands of years. And that's why we've got the technology and all the stuff we have now. You know, because, um, you know, you wonder why would one person with a lifespan no longer than 100 years